is a mentee and I want to talk to you about the in-depth visual perceptual assessment that your child is about to undertake or perhaps even you as an adult are going to participate in. We know that vision is incredibly important for learning, in fact about 80% of information is probably obtained visually. We also know that the standard type of vision assessment of reading an eye chart really tells us only a small, small amount of information compared to what we can find out. So the perceptual assessment is specifically for this purpose, to give us a lot more information about how your child's understanding visual information so we can understand how they learn, we can see if there are any significant difficulties with the way they're using visual information and then we can step in and make recommendations to the teacher or we can uh, suggest alternative things like vision therapy that may help them to gain better skills and better coping abilities in this area. So this assessment looks at vision right across the board, physical eyes and then the cognitive skills that we use to really understand what we see. We've known for a long time that our brain has specialty areas and they fall into the two sides of our brain or the two hemispheres and so our visual perceptual assessment assesses vision in that way with these two specialty areas. The right part of our brain is our spatial brain. It helps us to do puzzles, it helps us to remember shapes, it helps us to find information. And the left part of our brain is much more our language and sequencing brain. We use it much more for reading, for spelling. The first part of the assessment starts with a really good examination of eye health. The eyes are where it all starts, their first base. So we want to make sure that your child is seeing really well in the distance. And really importantly, that vision is optimised for all that reading and studying. We want to make sure our eyes work together with the exquisite precision and stamina that's needed for optimal learning. We also want to look at colour vision and 3D vision or stereopsis. Here's our vision therapist, Kathy Buckley, working with Ed Wood. Simple spatial activities like this jigsaw assembly puzzle give us some fantastic information about your child's spatial abilities. We can see how quickly they're able to plan and search using their eyes rather than just using their hands. You can also see which hand they use, whether they can work across the middle of their body. The next activity, Edward, is a copying activity. So this time I've got a shape up here. I want you to copy the shape in the box below in your neatest copying. I want you to try and make it so it's the same size. And I'm not going to time you. These tests of hand-eye coordination are strongly developmental. These skills are linked to maths and handwriting. The next activity is a looking and matching activity. I've got a shape up here. I want you to find that shape in the box below. It only appears in one of the boxes. It has to be exactly the same. When you find the shape, tell me which number box or mm -hmm. point to the box. Can you find the shape? You haven't looked at it. These skills look at how carefully a student can locate visual information when there's lots of competing information on the scene. A skill called visual figure ground. So it's a little bit trickier on your eyes, so you have to have a really good, careful look. So you can see the type of careful looking and searching type. A child's asked to find this in one of these. And then tests of visual memory or spatial memory where the child has to remember patterns that have directional cues and shapes have become more and more detailed. Which one's the same? Copying and handwriting tasks strongly utilise these skills. 
Now Cathy has moved over to assessing literacy-based tasks, skills that reside in the left part of our brain. The next activity is a spelling activity. I'm going to give you some spelling words yeah. and I want you to write them up here. Besides looking at your child's strategies for word recognition and spelling, we go on to look at the visual skills that strongly influence this. Things like processing speed, as you can see here, we want to see how fast your child can see, how much visual information they take in with one rapid look. We also want to find out about decoding speed, how fast your child can figure out words and say them. And we want to find out about aspects of sequential memory, how well your child can remember one visual thing after the other. All of these pictures, Edward, as fast as you can. A bit like the numbers we did before, so a real race against the clock to see how fast you can go. First of all, we're going to have a practice. So I want you to name the pictures as quick. This critically important skill called rapid naming is fundamentally important for literacy. So reading the numbers quickly, three, seven, five, nine, eight. Okay. See how they're in rows? If you lose your place, try and find where you think you're up to over here and keep going as fast as you can. But I'm going to get you Edward is now completing a scanning task. This looks at the hopping or saccadic eye movements needed for reading. Even before we can begin to make the little hopping eye movements in reading, we need to learn to move our eyes without head movement. We also need to move our head without body movement. Here Edward wears infrared goggles while a computer watches him read. The computer analyzes statistically how often and how long Edward looks at words. If your child is old enough, they will be screened to see if they find some benefit from colored lenses. There is a group of children with reading difficulties, people with migraine and epilepsy, who find the addition of color really helpful to stabilize print and help focusing ability. The colorimeter machine is used for this. It's just Hopefully you've found this explanation just... helpful and you can see so that your child's likely to, to enjoy this assessment. Yes. She sent three letters.